Street kids, today a worldwide phenomenon, also here in Jordan. The poverty in large families and the unemployment of their parents forces them to work or beg on the streets to earn a few pennies. The laughter is deceptive. The smiling faces often conceal great suffering. It's not only that they have to work, there is also no shortage of shady characters among their dealers, waiting to take advantage of their situation. Sexual abuse and even murder are not at all rare, and the children have little chance of a proper education. The economic crises in the Arab Middle East are the results of increased birth rates and high foreign debts which overburden their modest economic growth. For many years, international organizations have been prescribing adjustment programs to enable repayment of the debts. This demands great sacrifices, although the people themselves are not involved in the decision-making process. Now, the citizens are beginning to demand a say in their political and economic development. They want to take on responsibilities and join forces in a variety of citizens' associations and initiatives, so-called non-government organizations or NGOs. The numbers of such organizations have reached the tens of thousands since the beginning of the 90s. They are pioneers of civil societies in the Arab countries. Our film starts in the offices of the German Friedrich Naumann Foundation in Amman. Back at the beginning of the century, the German Democrat and liberal thinker Friedrich Naumann lectured that democracy can only unfold if the citizens are aware of their rights and duties, and if they are guaranteed freedom and human dignity. It is in this spirit that the foundation has been active in the Arab world since the 1960s. The team around Dr. Uli Vogt, the representative of the foundation in Jordan and Lebanon, is working together with Arab NGOs to implement programs aimed at strengthening private initiative and democratic principles. In 1997, the foundation initiated the regional program Bunyan, in English, construction. The objective is to support NGOs in the five Arab countries Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria and Palestina, and to promote active dialogue among both Arab and European partners. We don't have any map. I have the map now. Oh, the map is with you? Yes. Representatives of NGOs in these five countries meet regularly at Bunian workshops, this time in Amman. They are all very committed, but they also need to become more professional to live up to their new role in society. This workshop is dealing with further training, capacity building, and the efficient management of NGOs. The Bunyan program is managed jointly by Uli Vogt and his Lebanese partner Jean D. Page, director of the International Institute for Management and Training. Together, they have been able to develop a partnership on equal terms. Even if foreign organizations do possess greater technical know-how and above all financial means, this still doesn't make them more competent than their Arab partners who naturally know their social environment much better. All the Arab organizations used to be interested in was to obtain money from their European partners, without returning any information on their role and work in the Arab society. All the Europeans wanted was to distribute the money according to their rules and regulations. We now have a new challenge. We believe that the Arab organizations have ample experience and cultural values, but it's also their responsibility to present this to their European partners. Cooperation in the Bunyan program for the first time began already at the planning stage of the projects. 
The budgets are determined and applied for together. That really is something unique. Although many Arab NGOs were founded as restricted family or confessional welfare associations, they are today for the most part an expression of social commitment and increased citizen awareness. Some are working with permanent staff and considerable financial means. They are quite able to build hospitals and schools. Others work mainly with volunteers and minimal funding. They are active, for example, in human rights and women's affairs, stand up against illiteracy and provide health care for the handicapped and the chronically ill. How an NGO comes into being and the difficulties it faces in the Arab society, this is visible in the Tafaila district of Amman. The residents of the Tafaila district are former farmers and herdsmen who came to the then young capital Amman from the province Tafaila in the south of the country in the 1940s. Drought and poverty drove them into the city. Even today, their life in Amman is rural in character. They are very religious, and Islam determines their daily routine. When the people arrived here some 50 years ago, they built their houses on land belonging to others. Their descendants today live in permanent conflict with the city administration and the landowners, in constant fear of losing the roof over their heads. The six and seven storey houses stand crowded together almost randomly and the sun rarely shines into the narrow lanes and alleys. Approximately 15,000 people live here, 60% of them children under 14 years of age. They are the main concern of the local inhabitants. School children like Sadem sell tea in the city centre to help support their families. Since his father died, his mother has not been able to feed the family of eight from her meagre pension. Sadem hides the teapot from his neighbours in a plastic bag. He's ashamed of his poverty and is working on the streets. <laughs> Ali Harassis is the chairman of the Tafaila Cultural Association. He founded this NGO with a handful of fellow Tafaila residents in 1991 to be able to offer the young people meaningful leisure time activities. The first successful step was the setting up of a folk dance group. None of the locals in the Tafaila district took the initiative seriously but the youngsters were fascinated by the traditional dances. They became so good that they were invited to national festivals, and they are especially proud of the fact. In the meantime, the dance group has also earned respect for Ali and his friends. When a young Tafila boy who sold cigarettes in the city was murdered by the man who supplied him with smuggled cigarettes, it was soon recognized that the problems for the young people were more complex than a mere lack of leisure activities. They were missing the experience and means to bring about fundamental changes.
Another example is the Hadada district of Amman. The conditions here are significantly worse. The 20,000 Palestinian refugees who have settled here since 1948 are lacking quite literally all forms of social facilities, despite the efforts of the relevant United Nations organizations. Most of the men are unemployed. Children and young people earn their living on the streets, and the threat of prostitution hangs over the girls. Moyasa Saadi, also called Umm Mohammed, is herself a Palestinian refugee and has worked in the camps for many years. Her commitment for the poorest of the poor earned her a United Nations award in 1998. Mayasa Saadi knows many of the families in Hadada, among them schoolgirl Sabrine. She hopes to enable Sabrine to learn a proper job. Sabrine is like a daughter. I feel responsible for her. I hope I can help her to find decent work. Sabrine wants to help her brothers and sisters, and that is also for me a great motivation. Sabrine's mother collects old bread from the local tip to sell as animal feed. Sabrine's father is an unemployed lorry driver who is married to two wives and has ten children to look after. Sabrine and her sisters are still going to school, but who knows how long that will be possible. With her family development association, Moyasa Saadi is promoting a project for the forgotten residents of the Hadada slums. Together with the local women, she wants to set up a business to produce traditional food. It is eventually to employ 200 women and finance social facilities for some 300 families. Some $50,000 are needed as start capital for the project. But even more important is a sound market survey. Um Basel, a mother of seven children, has already prepared traditional food in her kitchen for private customers for several years. The women have been waiting for an idea like Mayasa Saadi's. I would like to produce more. I would like my children to work with me too, so that they have an income of their own and can become independent, can cope with the hardships of life. My son has an eye problem. One of his sisters is still at school. I'm all they have. I'm responsible for them. There is no point in producing something which no one needs. Moyasa Saadi learned this the hard way with a sewing workshop she founded in 1982 with six women in the Nuzhar district. The Nuzhar project was a success. Today, 25 women are employed in the workshop and another 100 women are working at home. Each of them is supporting a family of eight or even ten. Nevertheless, the sewing workshop is at risk due to the strong competition and declining demand. The needs of the market were not taken into account. This mistake is not to be made again in Hadada. Most Arab NGOs, such as those in Tafaila and Hadada, are lacking financial means, as the many projects cannot be implemented from the membership contributions alone. They need the support of private and international funding before becoming sustainable. In recent years, the European Commission and other international organizations have begun to accept that NGOs are able to work more efficiently and with lower costs than the generally cumbersome state structures, also because of their direct access to the people and their needs. The Commission funds almost 80% of the costs of the Bunyan program. James Moran, 
head of the delegation of the European Commission in Jordan, explains why. It's very, very important uh, if we're to achieve um, a real partnership and uh, real development in this part of the world uh, that these organizations, the NGOs, uh, play their full role. And I'm speaking here about bona fide NGOs who are making a contribution to the development, economic, social, human, uh, of the area. Now, Bunyan uh, fits very well into this perspective because Bunyan is a regional uh, operation where bringing um, uh, NGOs together from uh, five countries in the Mashrek and Egypt and uh, exchanging experience. And this is something which has not been done in the past. And there are a host of examples of very successful NGO projects being carried out. I, I saw one myself just two or three days ago. We uh, were down in southern Jordan where a handicap center has opened for uh, children there in an area which is particularly uh, suffering from um, uh, genetic deficiencies and other afflictions, which means that you have a lot of deaf children, a lot of handicapped children and so on. And they've been crying out for this special assistance for, for years. Now, an NGO has gone in there with uh, European Union funding, and one of our member states has joined in too, the government of France. And um, we have, uh, together, uh, and working with the local community, opened um, a center there uh, to help these uh, underprivileged uh, children. It's a wonderful thing to see. It really is. And that's the kind of development, the grassroots type of development, that, uh, that fills you with hope for the future. This Bunyan workshop is also concerned with an assessment of available know-how and exchanges of experiences. There are more and more experts in the NGOs, but they often know nothing of each other. Bunyan helps set up networks, for example to permit the joint use of Arabic training materials. It is important that more and more NGOs in the region are able to satisfy the growing demands on their social commitment. The success lies in the fact that the people in the region have begun to communicate. The Lebanese can see that the Egyptians are also progressing well, while the Jordanian can see that the Palestinians also have problems to overcome. This can provide consolation in difficult times, and everyone can learn from the other's experience. One of the participants said this morning that they have a network of 70 organizations, but are actually actually competitors. They're competing for reputation, influence and funding. They should be working together, but there is still competition. In the two years the Bunyan program has been running, more than 250 members from some 180 Arab NGOs have taken part in 17 regional training seminars and workshops. 14 joint projects across the borders have been co-financed. Bunyan enabled 20 NGO members to study the work of an NGO in a different country. All this aims at sharing experiences and joining efforts for the benefits of communities like Hadada and Tafaila. Quest Scope, a British NGO, has been active in the Middle East for several years. Together with the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, they're supporting the NGO in Tafaila. Haytham Wehau and his colleagues work with Quest Scope. They are Jordanians who, like thousands of young Arabs, devote great efforts to development work. It was Dr. Kurt Rhodes, the director of Questco, who first approached the people of Tafaila four years ago. His philosophy is that everyone should win in the fight against poverty, or at least that no one should lose face, neither the people nor the state authorities. All concerned must work with and not against each other to defeat a common enemy, poverty. Mohammed. Ahmed? Ahmed. Come on, Ahmed. Mohammed. When I went to Hayat Tafaila, I thought, I'm a strange person. It's strange to have someone like me in Hayat Tafaila doing something. So I have to do something that's not strange. All right, so I went to this uh, one shop, and I had no idea when I went what I was going to do. So we went, uh, got out of the car, Walk towards, there's two groceries at that time in the whole community of 10 or 12,000 people. And I thought, well, I like garlic. It's garlic season. So I went in to buy garlic. 
And of course, by speaking to people, they discovered that the guy, he's, he's not from Nemsa, he's not uh, an Austrian, which in Arabic translates he can't speak, okay? I, uh, I could speak, so everyone listened to me and I, I spoke, I bought garlics. Very strange for someone like me, but not strange to buy garlics. Then I said, can I use the phone? We don't have a phone, you have to go next door. So I went next door and the crowd follows me. But now they're simply interested in what is he going to do next. So I called my wife, and I talked to my wife in Arabic, which she doesn't understand, all right? I said, where are the kids? I mean, she understands this much. Where are the girls? When are they coming home? You know, are they studying? So people could hear that this guy who looks like he's from the moon, he has a family. He, he could be like us. All right? Because this is how I was raised. That anyone who came from outside, they had to be from the moon. And if they're from the moon, you can't trust them. And they're right. A long time passed before Questscope and the Tafila Association were able to agree on the first step, the formation of a joint study group. The people of Tafila have convinced themselves that Ali and his friends have come with serious intentions and they are ready to cooperate. The people are starting to think less in terms of myself, my family, and more about general social concerns. When we founded the dance group in 1991, we invited the residents to a meeting. Only two people came, out of 15,000 inhabitants. No one gave a thought for the project. Today, we have 70 members and can look back at many successful steps. The people need to sense success. Then they will also join in. Through the results of the study group with Questscope and the Tafila NGO, Ali and his friends recognized the difficulty of the task to be tackled and the importance of clear planning. Today, they want to find a concrete solution for the problems of the young people, together with Uli Vogt and Hazen Miha from Questscope. The idea of a leather workshop, which would secure both training and income, is not easy to implement. They have no instructors and no start capital. Even so, one significant step has been taken. The young people concerned were themselves at the meeting. When and how the workshop can be set up is impossible to say at this moment. But the residents already have a vision. In small steps, for example with a computer room for the children, they are coming closer to their goal. They've put their children in their best clothes for our camera. They are proud of what is being done for the children, who are to have a better future than their parents. Moyasa Saadi has also taken a small step forward. Uli Vogt brought her together with representatives of the Jordanian Young Entrepreneurs Association to investigate the market potential for the Hadada project and to elaborate a joint marketing strategy. The Entrepreneurs Association, YEA, was founded as an NGO with the support of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation in 1998 and aims to promote private initiative and entrepreneurship in Jordan. The YEA organizes business counseling, discussions on policy issues and training programs. They have set themselves the tasks to modernize the state-dominated economic structures and to build up social awareness according to liberal principles. Dr. Farwa Surbi is a founding member of the YEA. He studied in the USA and manages a successful business producing and marketing environment-friendly drip irrigation systems. The company has an annual turnover of $50 million and exports to the Arab countries, but also to Spain, France and Greece.
Of his 55 employees in Jordan, 22 are women. At the beginning, there were only men working in this department. Women were not allowed or didn't want to work. Now, the women are contributing five times as much as the men. For YEA members, implementing a culture of change begins in their own businesses. Bunyan has brought movement and new ideas into the development of Arab NGOs and into their relationships with European partners. Even though the concept of civil society organizations is closely linked with European culture, comparable organizations have long since existed in Arab history. Craftsmen, merchants and religious communities had their associations even in medieval times. While the rulers collected taxes and took care of defence, the citizens arranged their social and economic affairs independently. In the 19th century, this traditional form of Arab associations was weakened by the European colonial powers and instrumentalised for their own purposes, where they were not outlawed or disbanded altogether. Even after the end of colonialism in the 20th century, the organizations were strictly monitored and controlled, now by their own national governments. In almost all Arab countries, it is impossible to set up an NGO without prior appraisal and approval by a government ministry. Such initiatives can easily find themselves tagged illegal. Asma Kader, a lawyer and dedicated feminist, works with Arab legal experts in a Bunyan working group aimed at promoting the freedoms of association. In 1998, Asma Kader and a number of prominent Jordanians founded the human rights organization Mizan, in English, Scales. Mizan is working for civil rights, such as youth protection and women's affairs. They, not, uh, will, they will uh, coordinate this, this kind of job, job, for example, maybe one of them with a car. The primary concern for Mizan, to strengthen the awareness for citizens' rights, among the citizens themselves, but also within authorities. Most Arab women, for example, are not aware of their rights, and often don't even know which rights they are guaranteed by Islam. This seminar is to inform women in Amman on their rights. I was too shy to demand my right, to work or to turn down the poor payment. Here I have learned to stand up for my rights, however small they may be. I want them. It is not just a struggle between men and women. Men also means father.